Redux. That's what we're talking about today in this video. So grab your notebook, take some notes on this stuff, and let's cruise right along. Um, we have talked about the big five kind of types of reactions, synthesis, decomposition, double replacement, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And many of those fall under the category of oxidation reduction which has everything to do with, and you've read about this in your book, but the fact that oxidation involves losing electrons and reduction involves gaining electrons. And so once upon a time in your life, or Chem 1 typically, you may have learned those clever mnemonics like oil rig, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, or my personal favorite, Leo the Lion says, Grr, loss of electrons is oxidation, gain of electrons is reduction. So however you want to remember it, it doesn't make any difference. But almost every reaction we've talked about could be an oxidation reduction reaction except for double replacement. That one is not going to be an oxidation reduction because there's no loss or gain of electrons. So two things we're going to talk about. First, we're just going to talk about identifying redox reactions. And I'm going to remind you about what you read on page 105 in your textbook about oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are a way of us keeping track of electrons. They are often mistaken as the charge, because, but they are sometimes the same as a charge, but not always, because in a molecular compound, there's no ion, so there's no charge. So I'm just going to use an example reaction here so we can identify who's being oxidized and who's being reduced. If I have the reaction iodine plus chlorine plus water yields HiO3, iodic acid, and HCl. This is not a balanced equation. We'll talk about that next. But if we simply want to know, hey, who's oxidized? Who's reduced? We need to consider these oxidation numbers. So if you have your book, great. Open it up to page 105. You may find it handy. Um, if you don't, then make sure you make a note to yourself to go back and look it up. So this is just going to review a few of the rules in here. But essentially, there are a whole variety of rules, such as the first rule is the oxidation number of an element in an elementary substance is zero. Well, iodine and chlorine, that means if you have an element, it doesn't matter if it's diatomic or not, its oxidation number is zero. So in this case, both iodine and chlorine have an oxidation number of zero. Um, in number, uh, on page 105, I'm kind of reading them through. If you don't have your book, don't worry. But another thing it talks about is that the oxidation number of an element in a monatomic ion is equal to the charge of that ion. Here's an example of that. If I have NaCl, good old fashioned ionic compound, chlorine has a minus one charge and sodium has a plus one charge. This charge is also its oxidation number. Um, Another thing they talk about is that certain elements have the same oxidation number in all their compounds. And it's basically referring to the fact that, hey, everything in group one, like sodium, has a plus one charge. Everything in group two has a plus two charge, um, things like that. Then it tells you hydrogen is always plus one. There is an exception when it's combined with a metal, but hey, we have, we have hydrogens here. So hydrogen is plus one in a compound. If it was by itself, it'd be zero. It also tells you things like, hey, oxygen is almost always minus two. There are a few exceptions to that. You should take a look, but really, generally speaking, you're gonna find oxygen is minus two. Take a look at the exceptions to be familiar. So here's, um, oxygens are minus two. And then it tells you the sum of all the oxidation numbers if it's a molecular compound with no charge has to equal zero. Well, you know, look at water. Each hydrogen's plus one, there's two of them, so that's plus two, and oxygen's minus two, it equals zero. We're good. Look at HiO3. We have not assigned iodine. Each oxygen's minus two, there's three of them, that's minus six. 
there's one hydrogen at plus one, so what must iodide, iodine be? Oh, it must be plus five, because plus one and plus five plus the minus six will equal zero. Let's take a look at hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen's plus one, so what must chlorine be? Oh, well, minus one, right? Because then it'll add together to zero. If there was a charge somewhere, they would add to that charge. We don't see this in that example. But to answer the question of who's oxidized or reduced, we have to look at whose oxidation number changes. First thing I notice is iodine goes from being zero to being plus five. If it gains negative electrons, it would get a negative number. So this must mean it is losing electrons. If it is losing electrons, here's my Leo, loss of electrons, that means this is an oxidation. We would say iodine is the one that gets oxidized. Notice the hydrogens don't change, the oxygens don't change, but I do notice that my chlorine goes from zero and over here it becomes minus one. Well, to become negative, it must have gained electrons. So this is a gain of electrons. Oh look, Leo Blind says, grr, gain of electrons is reduction. That means that chlorine is being reduced. Notice what's being reduced in a reduction. The thing that's actually being reduced, even though it's gaining electrons, is the oxidation number. It goes from zero and it is reduced down to minus one. So that's another way to recognize a reduction. The charge, or not the charge, I take that back, the oxidation number goes down. Okay, next thing that we're going to deal with here is balancing redox reactions using the half reaction method, which I suspect you've all learned in your past, but you might not remember. So here's the half reaction method. I told you to not read it in your book because your book does it in a different order than most of you learned in Chem 1. So I am going to write the order of, okay, the Mrs. May very shortened version of how to balance reactions with half reaction. You're going to want to probably jot these down unless you have them memorized already. Here's the steps. Number one write two half reactions. Number two, balance oxygens with water. S oh, oh, take it back. I skipped a step. Don't skip a step. All right, balance the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen elements then we can do that step. Then you're going to balance the oxygen with water. Then you're going to balance the hydrogen with H+. Then you're going to balance the charge with electrons. And I will show you each of these steps in an example problem in just a moment. Then you're going to multiply, so electrons lost equal electrons gained. Then you're going to add and cancel, or cancel and add, I guess you could do in that order too. Then you're going to check um, atoms in charge. And then step nine, which only applies if in basic solution. So you will not do this step if you are not in basic solution, and you will know that because I will tell you. If in basic solution, add enough OH minuses to both sides of the reaction to cancel the H pluses reduce as needed. Great, those are the steps. 
I'm going to do an example problem with you. We're going to follow the steps. So hopefully you will be able to still see them because I'm going to scroll off and they will no longer be on my screen. So then you will reference yours. So I'm going to do an example problem with you. Example. All right, here it is. If I were to give you this equation, it's, it's essentially going to be a net ionic, but nitrate ion plus bromide ion yields nitrogen monoxide and bromine. If we're going to go ahead and balance this reaction, we're going to do that by way of the steps. Now, one of the things you could do is to assign oxidation numbers to everything so that you know, in fact, what, who's being oxidized and reduced. This is not a requirement in this method, but I'm going to do it just to um, kind of remind you of oxidation numbers. Oxygen, we know, are minus 2. Um, here's an ion by itself, so it gets its charge. It's minus 1. Here's another oxygen. It's minus 2. Here's an element by itself. It's 0. I'm going to assign a nitrogen based on everybody else. Nitrogen in this one is plus 5 because it has to come up with this minus 1 charge when they add together. In this one, nitrogen is plus 2 because oxygen is minus 2. There's no charge. It has to equal 0. I can see nitrogen goes from plus 5 to plus 2. I can see that bromine goes from minus 1 to 0. Again, it's probably pretty easy to see who hooks up with who in this case. So here are my half reactions. The nitrate ion turns into nitrogen monoxide. The bromide ion, Br minus, turns into bromine. One is the ox oxidation, one is the reduction. In this case, the nitrogen is the reduction. You might ask yourself how I know that. Take a look. All right, we're going to go through the steps. I wrote the half reactions. First step, I'm going to balance the non-oxygen, non-hydrogen atoms. In this case, the nitrogens are balanced, but over here I need two bromide ions because I have two bromines. That's it. Next step, I'm going to balance the oxygens with water. In this one, I have three oxygens on this side, but only one here. I need two more oxygens, so I'm going to add two waters. Now my oxygens and only my oxygens are balanced. I don't have any oxygens in this one, so I skip it. Then I'm going to balance my hydrogens with H+. Plus. Well, I just added four hydrogens on this side, so I'm going to add four H pluses to this side. Notice I'm, I'm following the steps. That was step four. Step five, I'm going to balance the charge by adding electrons. I'm going to look literally at the overall charge. This has four positives and one negative. The overall charge on this side is plus three. On this side, nitrogen monoxide has no charge and water has no charge, so the overall charge on this side is zero. I need to get those charges to be equal by adding electrons, so I'm going to add three negative charges, three electrons, to this side. That makes this side equal to zero just like the right side. They don't have to both equal zero, they just have to both be equal. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. This has two negative charges, so its overall charge is two minus. This, bromine has no charge listed, so its charge is zero. I need to make them equal by adding electrons. If I add electrons to this side, then I get two negatives plus two more negatives is minus four, that's not equal. So I'm going to add it to the other side. Now I've got a 2 minus charge on this side and a 2 minus charge on that side. We're good. That was step 5. Then I'm going to multiply so that the electrons lost equal the electrons gained. I'm going to look for the least common multiple. I've got 3, I've got 2, 6 is the least common multiple. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 to make it 6 electrons. I'm going to multiply this one by 3 to make it 6 electrons. The goal in balancing a redox reaction is not just to get the atoms to balance, but to make sure the electrons lost equal the electrons gained, because that's what's true. I'm going to rewrite that, otherwise it's going to be a mess. So I'm just going to multiply it all through. So 6 electrons plus 8H plus, plus 2NO3 minus, yields 2NO, plus 4 water, that's the top one. And then 6Br minus yields 3Br2 plus 6 electrons. If I've done it right, my electron numbers are exactly the same. Step 7, add and cancel. 
So now I'm going to literally add these two reactions together. Anything that's on the left side of one arrow and the right side of another can cancel out. So your electrons better cancel out. That was the whole point of this. You sometimes can cancel out other things. Molecules, H pluses, waters, take a look. In this case, there's nothing else that cancels, so I can literally just drop everything down. It makes no difference what order you put it, as long as if it's on the left side of the arrow, it stays on the left side of the arrow when you put it down below. And if it's on the right side of the arrow, it stays on the right side of the arrow. It does not matter the order you write it. The last step is to check the atoms in charge. So literally, like, okay, I have eight hydrogens, eight hydrogens. I've got two nitrogens, two nitrogens, six bromine, six bromine, and six oxygens. So it checks, that's the atoms. The charge is this. What is the overall charge on this side? They should add together. Well, let's check. Here I've got eight positives. Here I've got two negatives, and here I've got six negatives. If I add that up, I get zero. On this side, it's zero plus zero plus zero. They check. I'm done, it's balanced, we're good. I'm going to mention the if basic. So let's, because we didn't do step nine, because I didn't tell you it was in a base. What if I had the very same reaction, NO3 minus plus Br minus, but I said, hey, this is taking place in a base. And I get Br2 plus NO. Well, I would go through steps one to eight, just like we did. And I, where we left off with was just what is above here. 8H plus plus 2NO3 minus plus 6Br minus yields 3Br2 plus 2NO plus 4H2O. That's where we left off with up here, right? That was steps one through eight. But because it very clearly states this is taking place in a base, we're going to do step nine. Step nine says to add OH minuses to both sides to cancel out the H plus. We have eight H pluses. So we are going to add eight OH minuses to both sides. We have to do it to both. It's the only thing that makes this step okay. And then we're going to reduce and cancel. Well, here's what you need to know. If I have eight OH minuses and eight H pluses, that actually makes eight waters. Well, now if I look at that, I have four waters on this side and eight on the other. Well, those four can cancel four of these out, leaving four remaining. And so my final answer is 4H2O plus 2NO3 minus plus 6Br minus yields 3Br2 plus 2NO plus 8OH minus. This would be my final answer if this was taking place in basic solution. This is my final answer if it was taking place outside a basic solution, which typically means an acidic solution, which is always the assumption unless you're told otherwise. All right, that's enough. We'll see you in class.